Hey everyone, uh, it is great to be back with you on The Huddle uh, for a quick conversation with Judith McKenna. And uh, this is an easier introduction to all the associates in the U.S. because many of you know Judith because she was the chief operating officer for a few years and has done a number of roles throughout the, the company for a long time. And she's currently the CEO and president of Walmart International. Quite a, quite a big business, Judith. It is. And listen, thank you very much for the chance to come on the podcast and, and to talk to you, but also a chance to say hello to all of the associates as well. As you said, you know, the U.S. business has a very special place in my heart and especially at the moment. Um, thank you for your leadership and thank you to everybody for, for what you're doing. Clearly, this is not just a U.S. kind of impact and we're seeing it around the world. So the international business consists of 26 markets outside of America. We've got 800,000 as associates and every part of the earth is affected and all of our businesses are impacted as well. Yeah, it really is. And, and this started back in China last year in, in December. And uh, China, as you know, Judith, is, is a place that's near and dear to my heart and the people are there because I spent three years working in Shenzhen with the team. Just a really exciting years for, for me, my family, and, and getting to be a part of it is something that I'll, I'll never forget. But you've been dealing with this for a while. We, we've been really hard at this now, the whole team in the U.S., for about three to four weeks, depending on where you are in the country, some a bit longer. Uh, but you've been, you've been working through this exact situation uh, for about four months. So what I would love to do today is just talk, about, uh, talk a bit about um, what you've learned over the last few months, what you learned in China back in December and January, what's going on now, and how you think we should be thinking about what's going to be transpiring with our team across the country for the next few months. Yeah, no. So what I tell you, as you say, China was the first of our markets to be impacted in Wuhan, where we have stores, about 16 stores in, in Wuhan. That actually China went into lockdown around the 23rd of January. So they've been living with this since then. Since that time, every market has got along the curve, some further along than others. The UK, John, is probably our most impacted market. Um, that we've got today. In China, there is some beacons of hope. The country is starting slowly to open back up again. And Wuhan, that I mentioned, you and our CEO has actually gone there today for the first time um, to visit stores and to see associates. What we've seen there is what we've seen around the world. So you see signs of panic buying to start with. You then see people moderating what they're buying. You're seeing people switch to online. You're seeing people needing to trust the retailers that they go to more than ever. And I think that's one of the key things that's going to come from this is people trusting people for the future. What I'm also seeing in different markets is the way that governments are reacting in different ways. They're putting different restrictions on. So everywhere around the world, we're having to do things slightly differently. So at places like India, for example, where 1.3 billion people are in lockdown at the moment, we face different challenges with our Flipkart online business to the challenges we face, say, in Argentina. But what's incredible is leadership through this. To a person, everybody is standing tall and we're getting things done faster than we ever thought was possible. We're seeing people really focus on what matters. And what really um, I'm loving that I'm seeing is the way that best practice is being shared. So all of the things that you're doing in the US on glass screens, on gloves, on masks, on ways of working, on flows in stores, we're doing that around the world as well. And as you know, our teams are really closely connected, sharing best practices about those things so that we can keep associates safe, we can serve our customers, and we can keep thinking about what might be around the corner as well. Well, it's, a, it's, it's such a great point because it's a big organization and we're all, all on the curve in a different place. And it's even hard to define in some markets where we are on the curve. We, we don't honestly know in some situations, but we can rely on each other. I was on a call uh, just the other evening with Yuan and, and Ayo from Canada and the chief merchant and, and people on my team. 
And it's, there's just so much we can learn from each other because we've got to work together. And there's no reason for any one of us to have to learn something the hard way when someone on the team has already experienced it and can tell us what, what to do and what to think about. Um, you said something there that uh, also you know, really struck me that you know, people are going to be different for a while and, and even perhaps forever. We don't really know yet. Uh, in China, as you said, the market's opening up slowly. Yuan's back in, in Wuhan. Uh, Wuhan was actually the first trip I ever went on when I lived in the country to see a store outside of the home market in Shenzhen. So I, re I remember the city really well. And, and we're just learning how things are going to change. And the changes we're trying to make in the business, some of them feel like they're going quickly in there to solve today's problem. But many of the things that we're doing, I think that are going to happen at scale are actually going to be capabilities we'll be able to use around the world for a consumer that will ultimately ultimately be very different than the consumer we had just a few months ago. And, and do you feel the same way? No, completely. And you know, some things will remain the same. And one of them is that some of our best ideas are coming from our associates. So they're telling us ways to make the business simpler, to go faster, to take out things that don't work for them. And we're getting those done faster than ever. So listening to people is going to remain with us no matter what. Customer behavior, I, I think the two biggest things for me, one is trust that I've already mentioned. And the other is how people want to shop. So delivery and pick up in stores. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in China and some of our markets, we call that O to O. Um, online to offline, others online grocery. But, you know, again, the advances that we're making to be able to open up capacity for that, I think that will be a change of behavior going forwards that we're going to see absolutely everywhere. And it's one of the ones that I've seen some of the biggest leaps and bounds in in the last few weeks. And, you know, huge credit to the U.S. teams, and um, particularly in stores where the pressure is not just serving customers in the stores, but actually doing the online, the pickup and all of the other services as well. It's an amazing job. Yeah, it is. It is. And the, the speed at which we're changing is something else you said. We're, we are moving much faster and I'm, I'm excited actually to see us moving faster. And, and what this pandemic has done is it's reprioritized everything. I, I can think just a few months ago about sitting in a, in a meeting and trying to work through a list and rank out the most important things. Well, those things no longer matter because it's actually really, really clear now what what's most important. And people on the team that Janie Whiteside's put together, they're, uh, they're building these capabilities and they're doing it in real time while running these big businesses that are, that are growing. Um, just the other night, uh, my wife was up at just after midnight and I asked, what, you know, what are you doing? She said, well, this is the best time of day to get the grocery pickup slot at the super center down the street. So the, the slots become available mid at midnight. So she jumps on at midnight and shops every night. And then of course I'm, I'm then stressed because I've got to find a way to get more slots available and open it up because it's not just about her, it's about people all over the country are having the exact same issue because the service is in demand. So this is really gonna reset, um, I think, the way that we serve so many people across yeah, across the world. I think that's true. And, and what it makes us do is focus on what really matters. And that list that you talked about, about what were the priorities, maybe one out of those five are still relevant today. And there's probably right. two more, but not four more that you wanna to add to that list. And I think, one of the things that we're all trying to do is make sure that we're doing the right things in the right order and keeping those priorities of associates and customers. And that example of your wife, I can promise you, is happening right across the world at the moment. That's right. And Judith, um, one thing I did want to talk about, um, the role you're in, you've got a, a very, very unique view of, of the world. You have a view that's different than, say, someone that's in in the media or just running a market. You know, like when I was in China, we were I was part of a leadership team that ran a country. So you see the world in in a different way than probably others, and and I'm sure differently than you have been able to before. But you know, I'd love to hear you talk about what it was like growing up in the business in ASDA, and then having the big roles you had in the U.S. You let, ran the neighborhood markets, you were international, and and ran all admin. Then you were the chief operating officer. How are those roles? different and how has this role changed the way you think about business? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I, you know, every role I've done, I've thought slightly differently about it, but it builds on the skills that you've got from the last one. This role is unique because it gives you this bird's eye view of the world. You know, you see the positives and you see the strains everywhere that we operate. 
um, the US role that I had the opportunity to do let me do one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, which is be close to stores and be close to associates. I've always had this theme running through what I do about people and making sure that you try to get the very best of people, you empower them and you get them to do their best which leads us for international really to have a strategy of strong local businesses, which are powered by Walmart. And that's been, that strategy has come from kind of all of my experiences, which is I truly believe it's been like a store. So if you think about a store, the very best stores that we've got have got great associates. They've got a great leadership team. They're close to their customers. They know what matters. They move swiftly and they have a fabulous culture. That is kind of how I think about how we operate as an international business, but that's built on all of those experiences over the years to, to do that. And the fact that you can never do anything on your own. I mean, you, you know this, you talk about your leadership team all the time. None of us can do anything on our own. And that's the single piece of learning that I've had, not just through like my blah, 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 years of career, but actually now, and I could certainly not do what you know, I'm doing or we could achieve what we're doing with not the fantastic people all around us. I've, uh, I've, I've heard you say that, for, that, that phrase for a while that you have these local businesses, strong local businesses powered by Walmart. Um, I think what I'd like people to know that they may not also know is they're also empowered by Walmart and they're empowered by Judith McKenna and the team. Uh, your, uh, your your leadership is is greatly appreciated around the world and here. And um, I just want to say thanks for taking the time uh, to talk to us. You know, having your perspective is is really valuable to me and to my team. And we talk, uh, well, we talk all the time, especially lately, because uh, <laughs> we've got a lot going on. But uh, but I really appreciate your partnership. And it's uh, great to, to speak to you today and great to get to work with you. So thanks for the time. And I'm sure I'll talk to you again before the day is over. You will, John, and just a huge thank you again to everything that the US team are doing. You know, I used to describe the team as having grit. It's that combination of passion and perseverance. And you are making all of us around the world proud. So thank you again for your leadership. It is a pleasure to work with you. And to anybody that's watching it, thank you so much. We appreciate you hugely. That's right. Thank you. See you later.